coaxial cable, or coax, is a type of cable that has an inner conductor surrounded by a tubular insulating layer, surrounded by a tubular conducting shield. Many coaxial cables also have an insulating outer sheath or jacket. The term coaxial comes from the inner conductor and the outer shield sharing a geometric axis. Coaxial cable was invented by English engineer and mathematician Oliver Heaviside, who patented the design in 1880. Coaxial cable differs from other shielded cable used for carrying lower frequency signals, in that the dimensions of the cable are controlled to give a precise, constant conductor spacing, which is needed for it to function efficiently as a transmission line. Applications Coaxial cable is used as a transmission line for radio frequency signals. Its applications include feed lines connecting radio transmitters and receivers with their antennas, computer network connections, digital audio, and distributing cable television signals. One advantage of coaxial over other types of radio transmission line is that in an ideal coaxial cable the electromagnetic field carrying the signal exists only in the space between the inner and outer conductors. This allows coaxial cable runs to be installed next to metal objects such as gutters without the power losses that occur in other types of transmission lines. Coaxial cable also provides protection of the signal from external electromagnetic interference. Description Coaxial cable conducts electrical signal using an inner conductor surrounded by an insulating layer and all enclosed by a shield, typically one to four layers of woven metallic braid and metallic tape. The cable is protected by an outer insulating jacket. Normally, the shield is kept at ground potential and a voltage is applied to the center conductor to carry electrical signals. The advantage of coaxial design is that electric and magnetic fields are confined to the dielectric with little leakage outside the shield. Conversely, electric and magnetic fields outside the cable are largely kept from causing interference to signals inside the cable. Larger diameter cables and cables with multiple shields have less leakage. This property makes coaxial cable a good choice for carrying weak signals that cannot tolerate interference from the environment or for stronger electrical signals that must not be allowed to radiate or couple into adjacent structures or circuits. Common applications of coaxial cable include video and CATV distribution, RF and microwave transmission, and computer and instrumentation data connections. The characteristic impedance of the cable insulator used in low-loss cables. Solid Teflon is also used as an insulator. Some coaxial lines use air and have spaces to keep the inner conductor from touching the shield. Many conventional coaxial cables use braided copper wire forming the shield. This allows the cable to be flexible, but it also means there are gaps in the shield layer, and the inner dimension of the shield varies slightly because the braid cannot be flat. Sometimes the braid is silver plated. For better shield performance, some cables have a double layer shield. The shield might be just two braids, but it is more common now to have a thin foil shield covered by a wire braid. Some cables may invest in more than two shield layers, such as quad shield, which uses four alternating layers of foil and braid. Other shield designs sacrifice flexibility for better performance. Some shields are a solid metal tube. Those cables cannot be bent sharply, as the shield will kink, causing losses in the cable. For high power radio frequency transmission up to about 1 GHz, coaxial cable with a solid copper outer conductor is available in sizes of 0.25 inch upward. The outer conductor is rippled like a bellows to permit flexibility and the inner conductor is held in position by a plastic spiral to approximate an air dielectric. Coaxial cables require an internal structure of an insulating material to maintain the spacing between the center conductor and shield. 
the dielectric losses increase in this order. Ideal dielectric, vacuum, air, polytetrafluoroethylene, polyethylene foam, and solid polyethylene. A low relative permittivity allows for higher frequency usage. An inhomogeneous dielectric needs to be compensated by a non-circular conductor to avoid current hotspots. While many cables have a solid dielectric, many others have a foam dielectric that contains as much air or other gas as possible to reduce the losses by allowing the use of a larger diameter center conductor. Foam cokes will have about 15% less attenuation but some types of foam dielectric can absorb moisture, especially at its many surfaces, in humid environments, significantly increasing the loss. Supports shaped like stars or spokes are even better but more expensive and very susceptible to moisture infiltration. Still more expensive were the airspace coaxials used for some intercity communications in the mid-20th century. The center conductor was suspended by polyethylene discs every few centimeters. In some low-loss coaxial cables such as the RG62 type, the inner conductor is supported by a spiral strand of polyethylene, so that an airspace exists between most of the conductor and the inside of the jacket. The lower dielectric constant of air allows for a greater inner diameter at the same impedance and a greater outer diameter at the same cutoff frequency, lowering ohmic losses. Inner conductors are sometimes silver plated to smooth the surface and reduce losses due to skin effect. A rough surface prolongs the path for the current and concentrates the current at peaks and, thus, increases ohmic losses. The insulating jacket can be made from many materials. A common choice is PVC, but some applications may require fire-resistant materials. Outdoor applications may require the jacket resist ultraviolet light, oxidation and rodent damage. Flooded coaxial cables use a water-blocking gel to protect the cable from water infiltration through minor cuts in the jacket. For internal chassis connections the insulating jacket may be omitted. Signal Propagation Twin lead transmission lines have the property that the electromagnetic wave propagating down the line extends into the space surrounding the parallel wires. These lines have low loss but also have undesirable characteristics. They cannot be bent, tightly twisted, or otherwise shaped without changing their characteristic impedance, causing reflection of the signal back toward the source. They also cannot be buried or run along or attached to anything conductive, as the extended fields will induce currents in the nearby conductors causing unwanted radiation and detuning of the line. Coaxial lines largely solve this problem by confining virtually all of the electromagnetic wave to the area inside the cable. Coaxial lines can therefore be bent and moderately twisted without negative effects and they can be strapped to conductive supports without inducing unwanted currents in them. In radio frequency applications up to a few gigahertz, the wave propagates primarily in the transverse electric magnetic mode, which means that the electric and magnetic fields are both perpendicular to the direction of propagation. However, above a certain cutoff frequency, transverse electric or transverse magnetic modes can also propagate, as they do in a waveguide. It is usually undesirable to transmit signals above the cutoff frequency, since it may cause multiple modes with different phase velocities to propagate, interfering with each other. The outer diameter is roughly inversely proportional to the cutoff frequency. A propagating surface wave mode that does not involve or require the outer shield but only a single central conductor also exists in cokes but this mode is effectively suppressed in cokes of conventional geometry and common impedance. Electric field lines for this trademark mode have a longitudinal component and require line lengths of a half wavelength or longer. Coaxial cable may be viewed as a type of waveguide. Power is transmitted through the radial electric field and the circumferential magnetic field in the TEMOO transverse mode. This is the dominant mode from zero frequency to an upper limit determined by the electrical dimensions of the cable. Connectors 
The ends of coaxial cables usually terminate with connectors. Coaxial connectors are designed to maintain a coaxial form across the connection and have the same impedance as the attached cable. Conductors are usually plated with high conductivity metals such as silver or tarnished resistant gold. Due to the skin effect, the RF signal is only carried by the plating at higher frequencies and does not penetrate to the connector body. Silver however tarnishes quickly and the silver sulfide that is produced is poorly conductive, degrading connector performance, making silver a poor choice for this application. Important Parameters Coaxial cable is a particular kind of transmission line, so the circuit models developed for general transmission lines are appropriate. See Telegraph as equation. Physical parameters in the following section, these symbols are used. Length of the cable. Outside diameter of inner conductor. Inside diameter of the shield. Dielectric constant of the insulator. The dielectric constant is often quoted as the relative dielectric constant referred to the dielectric constant of free space. When the insulator is a mixture of different dielectric materials, then the term effective dielectric constant is often used. Magnetic permeability of the insulator. Permeability is often quoted as the relative permeability referred to the permeability of free space. The relative permeability will almost always be 1. Fundamental electrical parameters shunt capacitance per unit length in farads per meter. Series inductance per unit length in henries per meter. Series resistance per unit length in ohms per meter. The resistance per unit length is just the resistance of inner conductor and the shield at low frequencies. At higher frequencies, skin effect increases the effective resistance by confining the conduction to a thin layer of each conductor. Shunt conductance per unit length in Siemens per meter. The shunt conductance is usually very small because insulators with good dielectric properties are used. At high frequencies, a dielectric can have a significant resistive loss. Derived electrical parameters characteristic impedance in ohms. Neglecting resistance per unit length for most coaxial cables, the characteristic impedance is determined from the capacitance per unit length. The simplified expression is an outer diameters and the dielectric constant to 2000 Hz. Attenuation per unit length in decibels per meter. This is dependent on the loss in the dielectric material filling the cable and resistive losses in the center conductor and outer shield. These losses are frequency dependent, the loss is becoming higher as the frequency increases. Skin effect losses in the conductors can be reduced by increasing the diameter of the cable. A cable with twice the diameter will have half the skin effect resistance. Ignoring dielectric and other losses, the larger cable would halve the dB meter loss. In designing a system, engineers consider not only the loss in the cable but also the loss in the connectors. Velocity of propagation in meters per second. The velocity of propagation depends on the dielectric constant and permeability. Single mode band. In coaxial cable, the dominant mode is the TEM mode, which has a cut-off frequency of zero. It propagates all the way down to D, C. The mode with the next lowest cutoff is the TE11 mode. This mode has one wave in going around the circumference of the cable. To a good approximation, the condition for the TE11 mode to propagate is that the wavelength in the dielectric is no longer than the average circumference of the insulator. That is that the frequency is at least. Hence, the cable is single mode from to D, C, up to this frequency, and might in practice be used up to 90% of this frequency. Peak voltage. The peak voltage is set by the breakdown voltage of the insulator. One website gives. Where SMILS is the insulator's breakdown voltage in volts per milled in is the inner diameter in inches the 1150 factor converts inches to mils in, log 10 to lane. The above expression may be rewritten as where S is the insulator's breakdown voltage in volts per meter D is the inner diameter in meters the calculated peak voltage is often reduced by a safety factor.
choice of impedance the best coaxial cable impedance is in high power, high voltage, and low attenuation applications were experimentally determined at Bell Laboratories in 1929 to be 30, 60, and 77 ohms, respectively, for a coaxial cable with air dielectric and a shield of a given inner diameter. The attenuation is minimized by choosing the diameter of the inner conductor to give a characteristic impedance of 76.7 ohms. When more common dielectrics are considered, the best loss impedance drops down to a value between 52 to 64 ohms. Maximum power handling is achieved at 30 ohms. The approximate impedance required to match a center-fed dipole antenna in free space is 73 ohms. So 75 ohms coax was commonly used for connecting shortwave antennas to receivers. These typically involve such low levels of RF power that power handling and high voltage breakdown characteristics are unimportant when compared to attenuation. Likewise with CATV, although many broadcast TV installations and CATV head-ends use 300 ohms folded dipole antennas to receive off-the-air signals. 75 ohms coax makes a convenient 4 to 1 ballon transformer for these as well as possessing low attenuation. The arithmetic mean between 30 ohms and 77 ohms is 53.5 ohms, the geometric mean is 48 ohms. The selection of 50 ohms as a compromise between power handling capability and attenuation is in general cited as the reason for the number. 50 ohms also works out tolerably well because it corresponds approximately to the drive impedance of a quarter-wave monopole, mounted on a less-than-optimum ground plane such as a vehicle roof. The match is better at low frequencies, such as for CB radio around 27 MHz, where the roof dimensions are much less than a quarter wavelength, and relatively poor at higher frequencies, VHF and UHF, where the roof dimensions may be several wavelengths. The match is at best poor, because the antenna drive impedance, due to the imperfect ground plane, is reactive rather than purely resistive, and so a 36 ohm coaxial cable would not match properly either. Installations which need exact matching will use some kind of matching circuit at the base of the antenna, or elsewhere, in conjunction with a carefully chosen length of coaxial, such that a proper match is achieved which will be only over a fairly narrow frequency range. RG62 is a 93 ohms coaxial cable originally used in mainframe computer networks in the 1970s and early 1980s. Later, some manufacturers of LAN equipment, such as DataPoint for ARCNET, adopted RG62 as their coaxial cable standard. The cable has the lowest capacitance per unit length when compared to other coaxial cables of similar size. Capacitance is the enemy of square wave data transmission, and this is a much more important factor for baseband digital data transmission than power handling or attenuation. All of the components of a coaxial system should have the same impedance to avoid internal reflections at connections between components. Such reflections may cause signal attenuation and ghosting TV picture display. Multiple reflections may cause the original signal to be followed by more than one echo. In analog video or TV systems, this causes ghosting in the image. Reflections also introduce standing waves, which cause increased losses and can even result in cable dielectric breakdown with high power transmission. Briefly, if a coaxial cable is open, the termination has nearly infinite resistance. This causes reflections. If the coaxial cable is short-circuited, the termination resistance is nearly zero. There will be reflections with the opposite polarity. Reflection will be nearly eliminated if the coaxial cable is terminated in a pure resistance equal to its impedance.